written, directed, and produced for the woman's club by Spitzer McGee. It's entitled, When Knighthood Was the Stuff, or Who Wants to Wrestle in the Castle. And the curtain has just risen on the third gripping act, where in a gleaming suit of armor, Sir Lancelot is seen talking to the fair Elaine. These two parts we see by the program are taken by Fibber McGee and Molly. Ah, Sir Lancelot, do not be so distant. Come up closer to me, fair knight. Oh, sure. Ah. Uh, would that thou didst not have to fight the Black Knight in yon tournament today. I fear me that some harm will perchance come to thou. Say not so, or say not so, fair knight. Me thinks I can best this Black Knight with one eye tied behind me. Verily, Elaine, he is a peluca. A pushover, forsooth. Ah, there speaketh me old true Lancelot. Yea. Remember, I am banking on you, my fair knight. Ah, yes. Bank night. <laughs> Dost thou not get it, Elaine? Thou said thee are banking on me, and I come at back with a goodly quip. Ain't funny, Nick Lancelot. <laughs> Gad Zeus, I would fain have done better, did not these iron pants cramp at my style somewhat. <laughs> my Lancelot. Someone approaches the drawbridge. Is that what that was? <laughs> Could it be the man who comes to our house when Papa's gone away? <laughs> Nay, fair maid, it is the Black Knight. And now I must go forth to do battle for thy hand. Hold it now, hold it. For should thy fail, must thou perforce be given in marriage to the Black Knight. Ah, these are troublous times when a maid must wed against her will. Merlin the magician telleth me that he hath looked into the future unto the time when the shotgun will have supplanted the broadsword to this purpose. Merlin, bah, a faker, a reader of tin leaves, forsooth. You said it. <laughs> he is always taking an orange pico into the future. <laughs> I must go forth to battle, for battle, Elaine. Aha! He cometh! It is Sir Throckmorton, the Black Knight of Gildersleeve. Oh! Oh, Black Knight! Oh! It is I, Sir Lancelot, challenging thou to combat. Oh, yes! Yeah. Good day, good night. <laughs> Speaketh not to the maid of Astolat, Black Knight, until thou hast bested thy opponent, Sir Lancelot, in mortal combat. Yea, draw and defend thyself, Violet. The word is Violet, McGee. Oh, oh yeah. Draw and defend thyself, Violet. And may the best man win. Two arms, Canaves, two arms. Go uh, to it, Lancelot, me bully boy. Try a left jab with thy broad sword. Ah, verily it sounded like a boiler factory. I fear me to play play it louder than yon armor. None of your tricks now, Gilbert. Remember, I'm supposed to win. All right, Bucky. We got to make this look good, otherwise we'll... Oh! Cut that out, Bucky. You stuck me. Well, I couldn't help it. Here's the darn clumsy red bow. Well, let me tell you... Oh! You stop that stuff, McGee, or I'll bang your iron pajamas into a lot of tinfoil. <laughs> All right, you bang me, but don't give me any more of your lips. <laughs> Heavenly night, or day. <laughs> look at him go, will you? Now look here, Lancelot. I've had about enough of this. my hand in 
fair combat, Elaine. Wilt marry me? I wilt indeed, brave Lancelot. Ah, do I wilt. <laughs> but, fair maid, thou seemest sad. Thy eyes are drooping. What botherest thou? Tell me, Lancelot, hath America yet been discovered? Nay, not until eight centuries hence. Well, then how canst thou take thy bride to Niagara Falls? Boy, am I glad that's over. How's it go, Molly? Well, I think it was wonderful, dearie. It's the best play you ever wrote, I believe. Oh, what a wonderful performance, really. Oh, thank you. You were simply marvelous. Oh, sure. And you, Mrs. McGee, you were simply perfect for the part. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Uppington. <laughs> do you really think so? Oh, I do, indeed. The minute I saw you come out on the stage in that costume, I said to myself, how delightfully she portrayed the girl of the Middle Ages. <laughs> Now, looky here, Mrs. Uppington. Uh, excuse me, girls. Lay aside my sword and get started, Mrs. Uppington. How about the gate proceed? I'll just come out to Nancy. Oh, splendidly, Mr. Levine. Fine. You know, before we started, the club had a $300 deficit. Now, how's the deficit? Oh, now it's $950. Isn't that wonderful? Oh. The biggest deficit we ever had. Wonderful. Oh, my, I'm so thrilled. How's the audience reaction up? Are you good? Oh, now, I was extremely disturbed about that for a time during the second day. Why, Mrs. Uppington? Well, the steam radiators were hissing so loudly. And when I ran down to turn them off, there were no radiators. <laughs> Let me think of it. 
How can I get this dead red thing off? Oh, McGee, what are you going to do? Stand here all evening like a can of tomatoes? <laughs> Only one thing to do, Molly. i got to find a blacksmith. You come with me, Molly, and hold this cord over my head. What on earth for? There's a thunderstorm coming up, and in this outfit I need a lightning rod. Oh. Driving a beautiful, shiny new automobile. Then listen. Heavenly days, aren't you getting tired, dearie? We must have walked five miles looking for a blacksmith shop. Oh, well, I think there's one right around this next corner. Oh, no, there isn't, McGee. Now, look here, Mr. Gildersleeve. How many times must we tell you to stop following us? Go on home, Gildersleeve. Beat it. Scram. I won't do it. I want to be there when you get that armor off. Oh, I wish I could get it off right now, Gildersleeve. I'd show you. Now, run along and quit tagging us. I'll follow you as long as I want to. This is a free country. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, let me tell you, Gildersleeve. All right, all right. Take us up there. And you, where's your license? <laughs> license for what, officer? For holding the... I won't do it. Now, get down into that chromium cutaway and show me your license. That's right, we ain't holding the fray. This is a theatrical costume. Well, why don't you leave your costume in your dressing room, you off? Quit acting like a kid, you scut. Now, be on your way and I'll stand you in the time. Oh, yeah? What do you think I am now? <laughs> Come on, Molly. Bad record, bad well, hello there, Molly. Who's your friend in the galvanized Aberdeen? Uh, it's Silver, Mr. Wilcox. We're looking for a blacksmith shop so we can get him out of it. Yeah, otherwise I'm going to be a knight the rest of my days, Harlow. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a... <laughs> that's a tough spot you're in, pal. Ah, oh, but those knights of the round table had the right idea at that. How so, Mr. Wilcox? Well, they knew that there was nothing like a hard, smooth outer layer of protection. Uh-oh. We will now hear from that polished nobleman, Sir Cassian Walnut. <laughs> <laughs> well, gee, it's true. Johnson's wax gives floors and furniture a suit of armor that gives them positive protection in the battle against dirt and dust and wear and scratch. Uh, tell me, Mr. Wilcox, uh, did King Arthur use Johnson's wax on the round table? Why, he must have, Molly. Johnson's wax is good for round tables, square tables, coffee tables, things you can fill all tables, most dining tables. Oh, get to the end, Wilcox. Well, and then to the end. Hey, nice enthusiasm with a hose. You sure you don't know where there's a boxing stop, Harlow? No, I don't, Silver. But wait till you read what the newspapers say about that play of yours. Oh. Well, what's that got to do with his getting out of that suit of armor? Plenty. You <laughs> look for Pfizer. <laughs> well, good luck, pal. <laughs> McGee. Huh? This is Carlos. Shut up. He grudged one up to me and cut it out like that. Oh, now, McGee. Remember, it's his great big against you and that poor little suit of armor. <laughs> Don't take any chances. Oh, oh there, my dear. Who's your friend in the noisy knickers? <laughs> it's my husband, Mr. Boomer. We're looking for a blacksmith to get him out of the armor. Maybe you're the guy we're looking for, Boomer. As Mr. Roosevelt says to Mrs. Farley, how about the loan of your Jimmy for a while? Oh. <laughs> Rompers, very good. I've got exactly the thing for you. You have? Certainly have. Little invention of my own, a little gem can cutter and oyster opener. Guaranteed to open any home and window with one smart blow of the glass. Hey, that don't sound bad. You think it'll work on me? Five three daughters, one twist of the little gem, and you'll come out of that sardine sarcophagus quicker than a rat of ten. Well, quicker than a rat of ten. <laughs> Mr. Boomer, trot it out. This time you've made a sale, I like yes. All right, my dear. I have a little gem. I can't open it right here someplace. Now, what did I do with that little gem? Let me see. Here's a sprig of mint leaves. 
Then you say, I shouldn't try to remove his lamb. But his pop gun, I used to pop off my pop. He's a small object, no larger than a man's hand. In fact, that's just one deal. Looks mighty familiar, too. Very well, well, it's mine. But what was it doing in my pocket? that uh, Louis the Lifer asked me to deliver to the governor. says here, I've been in here for 30 years, and again, Roosevelt and Taft and Dewey are going to run for president. I'd like to get out now, if you'll pardon me. This is where I came in. <laughs> and a check for a small portion of Pilsner. Imagine that. No little gem can opener. Come to think of it, you've done me a good turn, Paul Fly. What's me? I'm going right home and invent the little gem right now. Good day, my dear, and so long to you, demodable drawers. Hey, Molly. Yes, sir. This greatest thing is still following us. Yes, it is. I just found Jeff around the corner. Uh, lucky for him, I can't get this dead dreaded arm off. I'd pound him flatter than yesterday's deer. That guy don't know what he's up against. That's on me, Molly. No, oh, well, that's human nature, McGee. Going up against hopeless odds. Just think of the man who ate the first lobster, dear. <laughs> I still don't see any blacksmith shops, Molly. What are horses wearing nowadays, anyway? Bedroom slippers? Ah, oh, you poor lad. You must be simply worn out dragging around in that pile of scrap iron. You're right near our house. Why don't you go home and lie down a while? Yeah, that's not a bad idea, Molly. Once I get a rest, maybe I can remember how to get this thing on. Then it would be. Oh, holy, brother! He's running in the river. <laughs> Old timer. Here, Bill. How'd you ever get married, Johnny? <laughs> Just over in my diet, old timer. Didn't have enough iron in my system, and now I got too much system in my arm. <laughs> wow. Well, <laughs> teacher, I don't get it. <laughs> well, he had to wear this costume in a stage play, Mr. Old Timer. He was very much on his nettle, and uh, vice versa. <laughs> Now, uh, that's pretty good, brother. Uh, but that ain't the way I hear it. Oh, dear. The way I hear it, one fellow says, what a fellow, he says, it won't be long now till all them political candidates start calling each other names over the radio. They were smart to all take a tip from this program and use Johnson's wax and all their platforms. That's me, says the fellow. Well, says the first fellow, you know what Wilcox says? Dirt can't cling to a Johnson wax surface. <laughs> well, it's commercial, but it's cute. <laughs> hey, Johnny. Yeah? You gonna be wearing that suit of heavy overwear all day? <laughs> well, looks like you'd have to, Mr. Old Timer. Why? I'm going to make some fudge tonight, and I'll give him 50 cents to come over and roll on the wall, Matt. Can <laughs> you think it over, Johnny? Come on, daughter. Oh, uh, he's got more silly notions than a five and three cents store. Boy, am I tired. I'm almost and I make a nice cup of tea, and then I look in the classified directory for somebody to get you out of that thing. Might be a good idea to start looking under filing systems. Oh, I don't know how I'm ready. Oh, okay. Oh, hello there, little girl. Hey, I see you at our stay tonight. How's it like it? Well, I attended the phone and I said that's not the capacity of it. <laughs> What's the mean? Well, I'm the dramatic editor of our kindergarten paper, and I have to see all of those, good, bad, and no different. Well, professionally, then, sir, what do you think of your little line of premise of our production? The underlying 
Good night. Good night, all. 